Allow me to introduce you to Sandy, quite possibly one of the most emotionally unstable owners ever featured on Hotel Hell. His emotional breakdowns are so frequent that you can't help but fear he might crumble under the weight of it all. Good God, I can't be that screwed up, am I? Well, perhaps. The transformation from construction worker to hotel owner has left him drowning in a staggering million dollar debt. What's even more astonishing is that he doesn't even pay his staff. They toil without a paycheck, trading their labor for mere room and board. But brace yourself for what comes next. The complete story of what unfolded after the episode aired is a roller coaster of twists and turns that you won't want to miss. Gordon Ramsay traveled to beautiful Westover, Vermont to stay at the Four Seasons Inn on the second season of Hotel Hell in 2013. Now, as a man who has stayed in some of the finest resorts around the world, Gordon is excited to not only be back in Vermont, but to stay at a hotel with such a prestigious name. With high expectations upon his arrival, he is somewhat surprised when he arrives. Expecting a dream, he is greeted more with a nightmare. This is the Four Seasons Inn, not part of the famous Four Seasons hotel chain. In fact, in this hotel, as guests step through its doors in anticipation of a high-class resort experience, they find themselves in a place where dogs roam freely, a unique establishment shaped by Sandy's profound obsession with canines. As Gordon walks into the entrance, he only sees a dirty dog bed in a tiny but unstaffed reception area. Eventually, Sandy saunters out to greet Gordon, sloppily dressed in a pair of shorts and a black chef's jacket. He takes Gordon to his first room, I say first because when he goes in, he finds an unkept bed and a rubbish bin full of empty beer bottles from a party the night before. Gordon requests a new room, and with that, Sandy bolts off towards the kitchen. He moves so fast that Gordon desperately searches the hotel for him. One of the staff members, Aaron, says Sandy is pretty scared of lousy feedback from his guests. Speaking of the devil, Sandy reappears, this time taking Gordon to an actual clean and tidy room to stay in. Sandy tells Gordon that in regards to the name, they are the Four Seasons Inn, instead of just the Four Seasons, which is how they can legally get away with calling themselves that name. And what is Gordon's take on that? Uh, four Seasons, more like Four Shades of After that, Gordon has a brief word with Aaron, who tells him that instead of Sandy paying them a wage, the staff works for free in exchange for accommodation at the hotel. With all of that, Gordon has worked up an appetite and heads to the restaurant hoping the food will be better than the accommodation. There, he is greeted by the bubbly waitress Gwen and the equally friendly and somewhat adorable Layla, Sandy's beloved pooch. It's Layla, she kind of runs the house here yeah, if you I'll haven't met her yet. Because she seems busier than the owner. Gordon orders his favorite dish, ravioli that's stuffed with mushrooms, along with a maple glazed salmon and an apple risotto. Gwen brings Gordon some curry bread as a starter, who finds it so bad that he feeds it to Layla. At least she seems to like it. The mushroom ravioli is weird, as Gordon describes it. The pasta is undercooked, and it looks like Layla threw up on the plate. With Layla snuggled up at Gordon's feet, the hotel's marketing manager, Richard, greets Gordon. However, Gordon is not impressed with his effort, and tells him he would have fired him years ago if it had been his hotel. After that tense but brief exchange, Gordon's apple risotto arrives but it is just as awful as the other dishes. With that, he heads into the kitchen to see the chefs who just cook the dishes. In the kitchen, he discovers his risotto was made with apple juice. I'm no expert in fine dining, but I don't think that is what the original recipe calls for. Steve, the chef, goes outside and gets emotional as he feels powerless with Sandy at the helm. After all that, Gordon needs some fresh air. Despite everything he has seen inside the hotel, he is taken aback with the beautiful Riverside location. Next, Sandy leads him on a tour of the adjacent dog kennel on the property. Despite marketing it as a dog-friendly hotel, its dog kennel remains largely unused. Gordon thinks that the kennel looks more like a prison than a place you would want your dogs to stay. In Gordon's words, it includes an empty play area that is a complete waste. Sandy blames his marketing guy Richard for the lack of promotion surrounding the business. Back at the restaurant, word has gotten out that Ramsey is in town, and it is packed with mostly local guests. With Sandy running around in the kitchen, there is no one to check guests into the hotel, so restaurant servers must check people in. The guests checking into the room complain about dirty rooms and barking dogs. With that, 
Ramsey sends Sandy off to deal with the problems. Steve takes charge of the kitchen. Gordon goes to talk to all the staff at once. He asks who is getting paid, and no one raises their hand. Sandy tries to be positive, but Richard has none of it, and walks out in disgust. The next day, Gordon decides to go to the pool for a nice relaxing swim, sporting his signature Speedo bathing suit. However, when he gets there, he finds the pool looks more like someone is running a science experiment in it, as it is a slimy green color. What's worse, Layla may have dropped a turd in there at some point, but it's tough to tell. With that, Gordon decides to go into the hot tub instead, because at least Layla hasn't pooped in it yet. Following that, Gordon takes Sandy for a surprise. Inside the room are past guests, who voice their opinions of a stay at the hotel, and they are not good, with excessive dog hair being the worst complaint. Or so they thought. That was until Gordon turned the lights down and busted out the trusty old blue light. Stains are everywhere, including on the carpet, the bed, and the sheets. The guests are horrified at the discovery. Everyone leaves the room except for Sandy, who looks like he is about to break down from all the stress. He stands there, holding himself, looking terrified. Since Gordon likes the Riverside Outdoor area, he takes Sandy back for a heartfelt one-on-one -on -one talk. Gordon tells him he has a potential gold mine if he will embrace it. Ramsey tells him to be a hotel innkeeper rather than a wannabe chef. With that, Gordon gathers the troops again. Steve starts looking somewhat relieved when Gordon announces that Sandy will become the new general manager and will not be back in the kitchen. To seal the deal, Gordon takes Sandy's black chef's jacket and burns it in a fire to ensure he won't get second thoughts and revert to his old ways. The entire staff is happy with those changes, especially Chef Steve, who is happy that Sandy won't be in his kitchen anymore. Gordon's team begins the remodel of the hotel. The next day, the staff returns to see the new changes. Sandy has undergone a makeover, not just mentally, but physically. He looks like a changed man with a fresh shave and a new haircut, while donning a respectable blazer. Gordon is shocked at the transformation, and they hug to celebrate. He tells Sandy he looks like a proper innkeeper. Also, gone is the old and confusing Four Seasons name, thank gosh. Gordon rebrands the hotel as Layla's Riverside Lodge. The entire staff, including Sandy, love the change. Next, they head inside to check out the new reception area. It is bright and vibrant, a complete change to the stuffy and dated interior from before. Regarding the restaurant dishes, as usual, Gordon reduced the amount of menu items to a much more manageable amount. The new menu focuses on a farm-to-table concept, with dishes like a homemade country pate, pork shoulder poutine, chicken pot pie, and the New England classic, a Vermont cheesecake. The staff, especially Steve, love the new menu. Turning our attention to the rooms, gone is that hideous wallpaper. Gordon's team not only conducted a deep cleaning, banishing all those unsightly stains from the carpets and linens, but they also generously donated $100,000 worth of organic linens to the hotel, a heartwarming gesture that brings tears to Sandy's eyes. However, Gordon saved the best part for last. Gordon leads the entire staff to the dog kennel, where the most dramatic transformation unfolds. Gone are the cramped quarters, replaced with spacious, airy kennel pens. The team opted for larger kennel pens by removing some of the walls, doubling the interior space. They also added charming touches, such as chalkboards displaying each dog's name, and comfy furnishings, ensuring a pleasant stay for our furry companions. Ramsey introduces them to the first guest of the revamped Layla's Luxury Kennel, Rumple, Ramsey's British Bulldog. That makes Sandy tear up even more. However, if you thought that was good, wait until you see the next section. The kennel play area is filled with dogs playing and having a good time. All the owners are staying at the lodge that evening. Furthermore, Ramsey brings in Shannon, a luxury dog kennel consultant, who will provide $10,000 worth of consultancy to help Sandy get the kennel portion of his business off the ground. Sandy takes Gordon's advice and focuses on being the hotel innkeeper Layla needs. As Gordon prepares to leave the kitchen, he tells the chef some parting advice. Uh, do not let him back in this kitchen. No, sir. No, okay. sir. Finally, Gordon says goodbye to Sandy who tells him that all the staff is going on the payroll starting the next day. Everyone is going to get paid finally. As Gordon packs up, Rumpel doesn't want to leave. I guess his new dog bed is a little too comfortable. Eventually, Gordon and Rumpel bid farewell to Layla's. 
Ramsey seems optimistic for the future, both for the hotel and Sandy and the rest of the staff. At the end of the original episode, Gordon says that business began to boom after his time at Layla's. It also shows Sandy giving Aaron her first paycheck. Sandy is again tearing up with such gratitude to Gordon for saving not only the inn, but himself. He has this message. If it hadn't been for you, I would not be here. Thank you. But as we've all seen too many times on Hotel Hell, an owner can seem optimistic immediately after Ramsey's intervention, only to return to their old ways in the long term. So, since this episode aired in 2014, what happened to Layla's Riverside Lodge? Is it still open? Where is Sandy and the rest of the staff today? Shortly after the episode aired, Sandy was interviewed in a local newspaper. He said that the day the Hotel Hell episode aired, it set off a flurry of bookings as the phone was ringing off the hook. He goes on to further say, We had over 800 messages in the last 24 hours on Facebook. The emails are insane. The phone calls didn't stop until 2.30 in the morning. The article goes on to some of Sandy's plans for the hotel. On the show, Ramsey's team initially renovated and revitalized two guest rooms. Following that, Sandy and his staff continued to redo six additional rooms, with plans to improve other areas throughout the inn. Looking at the reviews, it appears that in the years that followed the episode, Layla's was one of the success stories of Hotel Hell. It has good reviews online, with a 4.5 star rating on TripAdvisor, based on over 130 reviews. Many guests praise the hotel's pet-friendly policy in particular. It can sometimes be difficult to find hotel accommodation that is pet-friendly, so Layla's is a welcome relief for those who can't say no to traveling with their dogs. Many commented specifically on Layla, and how well-behaved she was as the official host, and in welcoming their dogs and making them feel comfortable. Most guest dogs have had a blast with Layla. Sandy has even taken the time to respond to the reviews left on TripAdvisor personally. According to the hotel website, the menu is comprised of 88% ingredients sourced from local Vermont farms. Vermont has some excellent dairy farms, which would make for some delicious cheesecake. As such, it seems like Sandy has done a great job of sticking with fresh, local ingredients while partnering with regional businesses. Speaking of Sandy, he looks to have gone in a new direction with his life. If you remember, he had cleaned himself up at the end of the episode with a fresh haircut and wardrobe. A few years after the show aired, he grew his hair out and became an advocate for medicinal cannabis use. He even had the lofty ambition of hosting the original Green Mountain Cannabis and Music Festival in 2018. However, the local authorities narrowly rejected approval for it. Sadly, not all the news is happy. In September 2021, it was announced that unfortunately, Layla had passed away at the age of 13. And then it gets worse because Sandy's health took a downward spiral not long after. In February 2022, he suffered a heart attack. While he had initially planned to live his days out in Vermont running the inn, he decided to pack up and head south for his body and soul, as he put it. He outlined it in a Facebook post, where he officially announced that he was selling Layla's Riverside Lodge and was planning on moving to South Carolina with plans of breeding English settler dogs, the same type of breed as Layla. In Conway, South Carolina, Sandy started SSS Ranch, Farm, and Kennel, focusing on organic meats, poultry, eggs, cutting flowers, and gardens. Sandy is enjoying life down on the farm. He has a massive property with lots of animals. Overall, though, I think Sandy is most happy because he gets to do what he is most passionate about, dogs. He continues to breed his beloved English settler breed. I think this is where his true passion really is. He even sponsors an official NASCAR driver which drives in local races. How cool is that? In addition to the Facebook page for SSS Ranch, Sandy has a public Facebook page that he continues to update to this day. As for the rest of the staff from Layla's, I found this in my research. Steve Dickerson, the head chef who fought to keep Sandy out of the kitchen at Layla's, still lives and works in southern Vermont to this day, even though he is originally from Florida. He may have stayed at Layla's until about 2018, when he decided to venture out independently as a private executive chef. He now does private catering for events like weddings and other events serving Southern Vermont. Along with his wife, Taylor, they run the Manchester Mercenary Chef. They were even featured in the Manchester Journal, where locals praised their cooking, particularly their wedding menu dishes. In the article, he goes the extra mile by extending a shout out to Chef Ramsay, 
particularly for his assistance in perfecting none other than Dixon's Creamy Oyster Mushroom Risotto, a culinary masterpiece refined under Chef Gordon Ramsay's guidance. As for the other staff members like Aaron, I couldn't find any additional information on them. I hope they are all doing well in their personal and professional lives. So, what ultimately happened to Layla's Riverside Lodge after Sandy sold the place in 2022? The new owners ended up backing out of the deal in July of 2022. However, only a short time after, it appears he found a new owner in late 2022. The new owners, Natalie and Julian Dion, have renamed it the Sugar Maple Inn. The building that was a dog kennel has been converted into a carpentry shop instead, as both come from a lengthy carpentry background. It operates as an independent wood furniture business alongside the hotel. So far, the Sugar Maple has excellent reviews online. According to their website, the restaurant is scheduled to open in November of 2023. Overall, they enjoy owning the property, and I think they will continue to do quite well with their concept. So there you have it, the fascinating transformation of the former Four Seasons into Layla's, and now Sugar Maple, over the past decade. It will be intriguing to see where it goes in another 10 years.